Hi, I'm Navdi. In this video, we are going to solve another problem on sliding window. On the face value, when you'll read the description of this question, you would not uh, find that this problem is a sliding window question. You have to go through few observations, you have to do few calculations, and then you will come to the point where you'll start to see where sliding window is going to be applied in this question. So that's an important question. This way you would get an insight also where to apply sliding window, when to apply sliding window and how to apply sliding window. So the name of the question is minimum swaps to bring less than equal to B people together. All the elements whose value is less than equal to B, they have to be brought together. At the end of this video, I'll share two questions which are very similar to this question. And along with that, I'll share the notes that we are developing in the description of this video. So without further ado, let me share my screen and let's understand this problem. So the question is, you are given an array of n integers, you have to find minimum swaps to bring less than equal to b elements together. You have to bring all those elements together whose value is less than equal to b. Let's take the first example. So let's assume we have uh, this as the given array, which has elements 1, 12, 10, 3, 14, 10 and 5. The value associated with b is 8. So you have to bring all those elements whose value is less than equal to 8 together. So let's first identify the elements which have to be brought together. So we have to bring 1, 3 and 5 together. So if we have to bring them together, there are uh, uh, two swaps that would be required. One swap that I'll do is uh, between these two elements. One swap that I'll do is uh, with these two elements. So over here, two swaps would be required. Minimum of two swaps would be required to bring all those elements which are less than equal to eight together. Uh, let's take one more example over here. If I talk about another example. So we have 19, we have 11 as the array elements. We have three, we have nine, uh, we have seven. Then we have 25, uh, then we have six, then we have 20 and then at the end we have four. The value of the B that is associated with it is equal to 10. So you have to bring all the elements which are less than equal to 10 together. So how many elements do you think would be involved in this? First of all, three, nine, seven, six, four. These are the elements which are less than equal to 10. Now we have to bring them together. So if we have to bring them together, the minimum number of swaps that we are going to use are one. So just with one swap, I would be able to bring four over here. And this way, all the elements which are less than equal to 10, they would come together. Right? So the answer for this is equal to one swap. Now, how do we solve this question? To solve this question, first we have to identify the desired elements. So the first step would definitely be to count good elements. The elements that have to be brought together. So over here, let me write first step as to count good elements. What are good elements? Good elements are those elements whose value is less than equal to B. Now, can I say that let's suppose the count of good elements is K. Can I say that we have to bring all the elements, all the K elements together. So we have to make sure that all the less than equal to B elements are brought in a K sub array. We have to bring all these elements in a fixed size sub array of length K. And what does this word tell you? Fixed size sub array of length K. Whenever you have a fixed size sub array associated with the question, you have to calculate something which is related to a fixed size sub array. At that point of time, you can definitely be sure that you have to apply sliding window over here. So for example, over here, first we are going to count good elements. Uh, the good elements count is let's suppose 
k so if the count of good elements is k so we have to find that sub array of size k where there are least number of bad elements what do we mean by bad elements i mean to say bad elements are those elements where the value is greater than b bad elements are those elements where value is greater than b if the value is greater than b that needs to be replaced i want to find in this question the question is to find that sub array which would need minimum replacements which has minimum number of bad elements so the question is find the sub array find the sub array which contains least number of greater than b elements which contains least number of greater than p elements so now let's try to go through our example once again so our example was 19 11 then we had 3 over here then we had 9 over here then we had 7 then we had 25 then we had 6 then we had 20 and then we had 4 in this example the value of b was equal to 10 so what we have to do is first we have to count the number of good elements how many good elements are there so i would say 3 9 7 6 and 4 there are five good elements now the next step is to find that sub array which contains least number of bad elements in a sub array of size 5 so let's try to see how many bad elements do you see in the first sub array of size 5 over here we can see that there are two bad elements so that would mean if i bring all the good elements in this sub array of size k or size 5 then i would have to make two replacements i would have to make two swaps now let's try to move to the next sub array of size 5 next sub array of size 5 is 11 3 9 7 and 25 from the previous sub array to the next sub array you can see that there is a new element which has been included and there is a new element that has been included and there is a old element that has been removed there is an outgoing element and there is an incoming element over here this is the incoming element and over here this is the outgoing element so can you find the count of bad elements using this sub array using the count of sub array using the count of bad elements in the previous sub array can you find the count of bad elements in the new sub array yes we can the outgoing element is what the outgoing element is a bad element so that means we have removed the contribution of one bad element so if the outgoing element is a bad element i will do bad minus minus and the incoming element incoming element is also greater than b so incoming element is also a bad element so i will do bad plus plus if it's a good element we would do nothing right we have to only focus on the count of bad elements okay and this way we will keep on going from one sub array to the next sub array to the next sub array we'll keep on going on all the possible sub arrays we have to find that sub array which contains minimum number of bad elements minimum number of bad elements means minimum replacements minimum swaps we have to find minimum swaps only in this question so let me talk about the pseudo code for this problem so pseudo code for this problem is going to look something like this the first step is obviously to count number of good elements so let me say that your good element count is denoted by k so i'll iterate over the entire array i is less than n n is obviously the length of the array so the simple thing that i'm going to ask over here is if array of i is less than or equal to b that means it's a good element so i have to increment the count of good elements i'll say increment the value of good element do k plus plus in the beginning i have initialized a variable k equal to 0 okay 
Now let's also talk about two edge cases over here before going into the further steps. Let's talk about two edge cases also. Let's suppose if there is no good element, let's suppose the count of good elements is zero. Then how many swaps do you have to do? Obviously, we do not have to do any sub any swaps. Similarly, if K is equal to one, then how many swaps do you think you have to do? If good elements are only one in count, then how many swaps you have to do to bring them together? Again, you have to do zero swaps. So if K is equal to zero or K is equal to one, I can simply return zero. That's the edge case. So since it is an edge case, let's mark it with a different color. Now let's move ahead. Let's suppose K has a greater than one value. Then what we would do? We would go through each and every sub array and we'll try to find the count of bad elements. When we'll talk, when we are talking about sliding window, we'll obviously go through each and every sub array. So the first sub array has to be done separately. Then from the result of the first sub array, we are going to find answers to subsequent sub arrays. Okay. So let's try to find the answer for the first sub array. The sub array is going to have a fixed length of length K. So I am going to iterate over the first sub array. So the first sub array is going to have indices of zero to K minus one. I am going to count the number of bad elements. So let's keep a counter of bad elements. Bad is equal to zero. Now I am going to say if array of I is greater than B, the only thing that I'm going to do over here is I am going to increment the count of bad elements. Just increment the count of bad elements. Okay. So we have done it for the first sub array. We have to find that sub array, which contains minimum number of bad elements, which contains minimum number of bad elements. So let's say we take a variable overall minimum. Overall minimum would be equal to what? overall minimum would be equal to the number of bad elements in the first sub array. So let's say overall minimum is equal to bad. Now let's move ahead. Let's do it for each and every sub array. Okay. So the first sub array was starting from the zeroth index till K minus one. The next sub array is going to start from S equal to one till E equal to K. And up till what point I'll keep moving until what point I'll keep iterating on all the sub arrays until E is less than N. Over here, what I'm going to do at the end, I'm going to do S plus plus and E plus plus. Okay. Let's try to find the answer of the current sub array with the help of the answer of the previous sub array. The only two things that I'm going to do is I am going to say what about the outgoing element. So if the outgoing element is a bad element, if array of S minus one is less than B, then what should I do? So my bad over here, bad element is defined as array of S minus one, which is greater than B. So if the element, which is going out, if it is greater than B, if it's a bad element and it is going out, so the count of bad elements is going to reduce. And similarly, there is another question that I'm going to ask, which is what about area of E, the new incoming element? If the incoming element is a bad element, then it is going to increase the count of bad elements. So I'm going to do bad plus plus. Now, the next thing that we are going to do over here is we have to find the count of minimum count of bad elements. So I am going to say the current count of bad elements if it is less than the overall minimum. So what we should do, we should update overall minimum with bad, with the current value of bad, right? When we come out of the loop, we will return the minimum value, which is associated with the count of bad elements that is given by overall minimum, right? So this is how this code was to be written. And what we are going to do is, we have done this question in three steps. The first step was to do count of good elements. We found the size of the fixed sub array where we have to bring all the good elements together. 
Then we also figured out that the subarray of our choice is going to be that subarray which contains the minimum number of bad elements. So for that, we use sliding window. The first sliding window was solved like this. The first window containing elements starting from the zeroth index till k minus one was solved like this. Then we use sliding window approach to solve all the other subarrays. The subarray which contains the minimum count was returned as the answer. Where the count of the bad elements was minimum, that was returned as the answer. So this is how this question was to be solved. And if I talk about the time complexity of this question, then over here, the number of iterations are n in the first subarray. Uh, in the first uh, loop, there are n iterations. In the second loop, there are k iterations. And as we did in the last example, in the last video, the number of iterations over here are n minus k. So total number of iterations are going to be n plus k plus n minus k, which is equivalent to 2n. So the time complexity over here is going to be big of n. If I talk about the space complexity, space complexity over here should be big of one because we have taken constant number of variables to solve this question. Now let's talk about some more problems which can be solved as a homework. You can do them on your own. And let me talk about those problems. So the first problem that I want to give you is that you are given a binary array. And in that binary array, there are only two types of elements that can be given inside. One is one, zero. These are the only two elements that are allowed in a binary array. You are given a binary array of length n. You have to find minimum number of swaps to bring all those ones together. Minimum swaps to bring all ones together. Right? Very similar, very easy to the last question that we solved. There is an extension to this question. The extension says that this time you are given a binary circular array. You are given a binary circular array and you have to find all the minimum swaps to bring all the ones together. You have to find minimum swaps to bring all ones together. But this time the array is circular. What do I mean by circular is, uh, let's take this example over here. So let's suppose you have one, 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 then you have zero, then you have zero, then you have one, then you have one, and then you have zero. This is the array that is given to you. You have to find the minimum swaps to bring all ones together. If it would have been a linear array, then the answer would have been two. Why it would have been two? Because you would have swapped these two elements with these two elements and you have brought all the ones together. But since it is a circular array, what do we mean by circular is that this last element, the adjacent of this last element is first element. So what we will do is we will swap this element with this element. So we'll get zero over here and we'll get one over here. And just with the help of one swap, you are going to get all these elements together. One, one, and these three ones over here, all these fives are together. Since it's a circular array, the last element is considered adjacent to the first element. So there is a circularity, there is a connection. So these are the two questions that you can try and think, and I hope you would be able to solve them. I hope you have understood this concept. I hope you would be able to implement this into your favorite programming language. Thank you.